No, get out there. Don't, Ricky. Get oh, no. They swing and play like any typical little boys, but now they play alone. They go to school alone. They live their lives alone, but together. You see, just about everyone who once cared for these little boys now shuns them for no other reason than fear. Do you miss your friends? Yeah. Ricky, Robert, and Randy Ray are infected with the AIDS virus. Ricky! You could never tell it by looking at them, but all three of the Ray boys are hemophiliacs and contracted the disease through the plasma used to clot their blood. But today, the children still can't understand why people are so scared, why their friends don't come over to play anymore, or their neighbors don't hug them, why they can't go to church or school, or even why their longtime barber in Zolfo Springs told them she couldn't cut their hair. We ain't even sick. We're just regular kids. Just the antibody. You can't catch it. Through a child's eyes, the answers always are easy, but not so to many adults. For the people living here in Arcadia, AIDS suddenly means something more than just a picture of a man's withered, dying face on the 6 o'clock news or a headline in a newspaper. Suddenly it's something you can touch, something as real as a little boy standing next to you in the checkout line at the grocery store. AIDS has come home to middle America, and the people here in Arcadia are having to learn how to cope. Arcadia is scared, but Arcadia is not going to be the only town scared. Other people in the United States of America are going to be scared. We're not the only ones. This man speaks for many people living in Arcadia. Down at Coke's drugstore, a popular local gathering spot, a petition is going around. It supports the school's decision to teach the Ray boys in a separate environment. I think we should be cautious. I think it's real nice of the school to give those children a special place to go to school. Floyd Lewis's son is seven years old. He's in the same grade as Randy Ray. But Lewis said he signed the petition because he does not want his son near a child who suffers from the AIDS virus. And we just don't like the idea. I mean, I know it's, it's hard, you know, for their kids, but also it's rough on ours. We don't, you know, want to get into anything like that. And, uh, you know, I just would rather not have it. I wouldn't have it, really. Tomorrow, federal judge Elizabeth Kavakovich will make a decision that may have a profound and never-ending impact on the Ray boys and perhaps every child like them. That's whether to allow them in the classroom with other children. If she decides to keep them out, it will be the first time a child with the AIDS virus has ever been legally kept away from other kids. Betty Burge is a friend of the Rays, and she says they're being treated worse than animals. They're being prosecuted before they're tried. Uh, they're convicted, really, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, of, of circumstantial evidence. See, look, your teddy bear. Oh, is it in the gum? Hi. It's in that gum? Oh, here, okay. me it for you? I'll fix it. Okay. I've got, I've got but I remember a time, though, that I was scared, too. So I can't really, you know, put them down for it. Um, I just put down the ones that are too ignorant to learn. Those are the ones that aggravate me the most, are the ones that don't want to learn and don't want to try to learn. Louise Ray says the boys are bearing up well under all the strain, and so is their little sister Candy, who's not sick. But the problems come when the family is alone, out of the glare of the public eye. There are times when, you know, at home and it's nice and quiet, you know, that you, you see things, you see the tears, uh, you know, you see the frustration of not being able to be like their friends. I'm very worried about them. I'm worried about, you know, what, what, what's going to happen to them after this is over with. I, I... The oldest of the Ray boys, 10-year-old Ricky, recently wrote a letter to President Reagan. It says, we are having a hard time now, Mr. President. My mom and dad can't find a job. We don't have a place to live. He went on to ask the president for help. Maybe you can make a government law that we could all go back to school and nobody would have to worry about it anymore. But there aren't likely to be any laws that will make these boys' paths any easier. You can't legislate a parent's fear or the loneliness in a little boy's heart. I always think, well, you know, there's no more tears left, but you find out there are. I don't think they ever end. I don't guess they ever will. With a closer look, I'm Kelly Ring. Yeah,